a church I know which struggles to draw an ageing and select few to its formal communion services, suddenly became full of all ages enjoying themselves at that busy annual fete. It reminded me of how the church began in Acts and the New Testament letters. Many churches today emphasise one thing to the exclusion of others. For example, the first disciples were breaking bread together, fellowship over a meal and a way of experiencing Jesus present with them. What a distant relation of this, the wordy and full Eucharistic service, has become. Followers of Jesus also gather to share scripture and recollections about Jesus. They came together for prayer and teamed up for mission. All this through fellowship, which gets far more mentions than anything else. All those different activities of the emerging New Testament church came out of their relationships, believers together as one, in their expectation of Jesus being spiritually present with them. That's faith in action, not a form of words. And it's those who love Jesus being one with each other and Jesus, not just a social get-together. Fellowship brings a life of its own because it's infused with the new life that Jesus brings. It's as simple as that. Christian fellowship is deeply attractive, and it's the way all the other things happen, less by the efforts of the members than through willing cooperation with the Holy Spirit enabling them with his gifts. That teaches us that fellowship is the thing we should emphasise above all other. That's restoring real communion with each other and Jesus, which can draw outsiders rather than the dry recitations which exclude. A balanced and biblical view of church life must put Jesus and his fellowship first and foremost. That gives space for all the other gifts and activities to grow through people loving God and one another, which Jesus called the Great Commandment.